What's cooking, Juventus fans? Welcome back to your old lady's favorite YouTube channel. Given the fallout of the Dybala saga, seeing as he will no longer be renewed at the club, Juventus now are looking at other options to end up reinforcing a attack and the midfield for the future. Where do they look at? Well, some potential options include your, uh, the Premier League, as well as our old friends at Sassuolo. Stick with us, we'll fill you in. Ciao ragazzi, welcome back to the Beyond Canary Zone. My name is Justin Sovro. Today, it's Tuesday, March 22nd, 2022. And of course, I have your latest rundown of all things you've been to all the news that you care about each and every day, hopefully in a quick bite to get you in and out and about your day. Uh, before we do anything though, please go ahead and smash that like button, hit that subscribe button, and hit that bell icon to stay notified for all of our latest videos. Let's just dive into it though now. All right, the very first news story of the day that we have is regarding Juventus and Dybala and really the fallout from there, what happened, and give us a little bit more clarity of how it happened. Because yesterday, obviously, we talked about that there wasn't going to be a renewal. We talked about potentially um, some offers that were going to come in, and maybe that news was not as uh, truthful as we had expected. So here's what we have here from Correa de la Sport. They're saying that in the meeting with Dybala's entourage, the new benchmarks for contract renewals were explained. After the end of the meeting, Kerubini called Antun to inform him of Juventus's desire to not submit an offer. So as it appears right now, uh, I think there were, I even talked about it yesterday in yesterday's video, saying that there were rumors out there that basically the whole Dybala situation, we were expecting him um I, I I had heard that the number potentially would be lowered to like 6 million euros plus maybe four in bonuses that he'd have to reach depending on how much he play. Well, it looks like that wasn't even the case. In the case of the matter now, it just appears like Kerubini heard him out, spoke with George Antoon, and explained the situation with renewals, and then at the end of it was like, you know what? This is not what we want to do. We do not want to make a move. We are officially, I mean, it's a cutthroat business, right, at this point. And it seems like that's exactly the kind of um, move they decided to make. And they were like, we're done. The Dybala saga at Juventus is over. Uh, we're going to make a clean break. We wish you the best wherever you end up. But at, the, at this point, Dybala's time at Juve is done. So that was kind of uh, more surprising, honestly, uh, given the situation. But I guess Aniva Bene, he is a shrewd businessman, and he knows what he's doing. They have a project that they are building around he and Kerubini uh, with the future of the club. So we'll see where it goes from here. Uh, but it seems at this point um, that they knew, and maybe they even wanted Dybala out of the project. So that's kind of a, a bit surprising to me. Obviously, giving those health issues uh, less of a... Um, a shocking moment than it would have been, you know, maybe, you know, a year and a half ago. Um, anyway, as it stands right now, they're going to look into guys that they need to replace. And I would imagine that if I were uh Kerubini or if I were Riva Bene in the situation, you do not make this decision without knowing that wh where your plan can go from here. You don't make this decision without knowing who the guys you're going to go get. So we'll talk about that here in just a sec. Let's move on to the next story of the day though. And the next story of the day is actually Gazette del Sport, who's reporting that Allegri's dream signing is Mohamed Salah. A difficult deal to, to do, but not impossible. Also because talks with Liverpool over a new deal are at a standstill. So yeah, if you follow reports there, I haven't as closely. Uh, but at the same time, we do know that there are some uh, I guess stumbling blocks when it comes to his renewal at Liverpool. Obviously, the signing of the of uh, Salah would be a fantastic get for Juventus if they can get it done. I think right now he's valued at about a uh, hundred million uh, euros, but he only has about a year left on his contract, so it depends on how much that you know that would that would really bring it down to. Um, if you can get him, obviously it would be a great get for the club, but I just don't see it happening. I think in the long term, um, I don't know if you, if uh, an Eva Bene or you know Kedabini would even be willing to spend that kind of money on a player. Maybe they will. Maybe they will. Uh, but at the same time, that's a name that uh, almost surprised me that Allegri is really that uh, that interested in. I don't know that he's interested in, but he would actually try to go get. So let's monitor that. We'll see how that situation develops from here. I'm not going to go too, too much into it because this is the first time we're really talking about it on the channel. And like I said, if you know me, that's the way I like to go about it. We talk about it. And if it starts becoming a recurring story, we'll dive more deeply into it. Let me know your thoughts about going after Salah, though. All right. Salah. You know me in pronunciations. I apologize. All right. Let's go on to the next part of the story. 
And that's Gazeta del Sport, who is uh, reporting that Juventus are already moving to replace Dybala with Zaniolo and Raspadori being at the top of the list. So obviously, we've known Zaniolo has been a name that's been up there uh, with Juventus for a while. And we even talked about how before um, Zaniolo and Dybala usually playing in the same area of the field, that more than likely uh, he would have to replace him. And it looks like that could be the case now. Uh, One of the things that I thought were interesting, obviously, these two names have been floated out. For weeks, at least right now, this moment, um, and it seems pretty high on Juventus's radar. Um, when it comes to Zaniolo, um, obviously there's health injury and injury issues that may bring some red flags for a few of you all, uh, or a lot of you. Let's let's not kid ourselves. But then also, um, I'd be interested to see how he does. There were rumors out there that Zaniolo also had already agreed to a deal um, with Roma now, and now it appears. Now, that's probably not the case. We'll get to that here in just a second. But then Ross Midori, uh, my question is, when it comes to this part of the story, is it Zaniolo or Raspadori, or could it be both? And the reason I say could it be both, obviously Zaniolo is more of a uh, midfield player, while Raspadori, I view him a little bit playing a little bit more up front in the, in the attack. Um, so I'd wonder if they could use both of them, or it'd be either or in the situation. Because I'd imagine if you're not renewing, a player like Dybala for the amount of wages you're going to pay him, I feel like you could probably pour that money potentially into two players uh, and for the future of Juventus. All right, and let's go on, uh, continue on what I was talking about with Zaniolo in a message audio uh, saying that Roma seems willing to listen to offers that may arrive for Zaniolo. And for now, they have not called his entourage to talk about a new contract. So that's a, a bit of um, new news. Oh, well, of course it's new news. That's why it's news. Uh, but at the same time, uh, that conflicts with previous reports that basically Zaniolo and Roma had agreed to a new deal and that basically he was off the table. Now it seems like that is not the case. And like I said before, until pen meets paper, it's never done, right? If there's anything we know about now, when it comes to Dybala, where we always heard that they agreed, uh, but it just was a matter of fact about how to get to the point of signing it. Look where we are now. So when it stands right now, uh, high chances that Zaniolo could be uh, seriously targeted by Juventus and that he could end up coming in the summer uh, to replace Dybala. All right, let's move it on. The next part of the story, that's Carnivale, who had some comments about maybe doing some future deals with Juventus. And it's funny, uh, just the, uh, the, the change in tone from what I remember before. Um, anyway, he is saying Raspadori to Juventus. We have already done the Locatelli deal with Juventus. And if there was a possibility to do more, we would be happy. So I, this is just a 180. And when the, the conversation and the uh, personality that I remember uh, from, uh, from, uh, I'll say Riva Bene, from Carnivale, if you remember all the snide comments and all the rude, whatever stuff, I don't know. It's because I don't know if you remember about a month or so ago, maybe it's been more than that. Uh, we had some rumors out there about Carnivale potentially joining Juventus as like a, you know, as a, some, at some capacity or role, um, in their management there. Um, I don't know if that might be positioning here and he wants to be in good graces with Juve. So maybe, Hey, get a deal done. Then I can go join them. We'll see. Uh, but it's just funny. The, the entire uh, change of pace of the exact wording that they would use. They used to use so many, you know, we're not going to get, you know, bleeped around kind of, kind of ideal ideology there. And now it's like, Oh, we'd love to come on over here. Even though the Locatelli deal was very, very fortuitous to Juventus. So we'll see if that ends up happening with the Raspadori deal as well. I think he also made comments, uh, mentioning that Raspadori had some interest, um, from, I think, a Premier League club or something like that. But I think Juventus would probably take precedent over that, uh, with the club, but also with the player, um, potentially maybe i know he's also an inter fan but eh. all right let's continue on uh this actually goes along with carnival's comments and gazetta del sport is reporting that uh juventus may even consider going for domenico Baradi. uh the, the sassuolo ford is a high valuation of around 30 million euros but the excellent relations between the two clubs could facilitate a possible deal um, I, I, it's funny because I've had so many people ask what well, we've done lives and we've done different videos on the channel. Could Badati be an option? I've always said kind of no, cause I didn't think, I thought they had moved on. That was a name of the past, but yeah, I guess a past name could come back. I still, my stance on this, I'll just say this. My stance on this is, mm, I don't think so. Like, I just think at this point he's getting too old. Um, it, it wouldn't be, I, to me, it doesn't seem like a good investment on Juventus' part um, to bring him in right now. I think at this point, I would just focus on a player like Raspadori, who has a higher long-term ceiling than Barati would, uh, that, that I believe, personally. Um, 
Let me know, though. Do you think, do you disagree with me? Would you go after Benati over Raspadori? Who do you think would be the better option if you're looking at a Sassuolo player? Benati or Raspadori? Let me know. Uh, I know we could throw Traore in there, but I think given that the uh, situation uh, where Juventus didn't end up buying him when they had that uh, clause in there, I don't think he's really going to be an option. So let's keep it between Raspadori and Benati. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. All right, and then the last story of the day. Is talking about midfielders, and that's Tudor Sport who's saying that Juventus are working on the midfield at the top of the list are two names, Pogba and, of course, when we give it Savage, I say, of course, that's a dream one, right? Uh, Paul should reduce his wages, uh, wage demands while the Serbian has a contract until 2024 at 3.2 million euros. But Lotito would surely ask for a lot, and then we've talked about that. Lotito will ask for a arm and leg when it comes to trying to pry any player from Lazio to come to Juventus, especially Malinkovic Savage. Um, the other names on Kedubini's list are Renato Sanchez, <coughs> injury prone, uh, Jorginho, who could be an opportunity given his contract, and Chelsea's problems, who could declare, uh, who, who could decide uh, to sell the player immediately, not to lose him on a free, and Paredes. Uh, context have already been made when it comes to Benetis. I think of these options, um, obviously Pogba, Savage, and Jorginho to me are the top three options. If you're going to get one of those players, I think you could do a lot worse than either of those. Um, Ronaldo Sanchez, I, 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 I coughed, <laughs> but uh, you know, he, he, he's had so many injuries. I don't think Juventus, unfortunately he's, he was a solid player or he is a solid player, but it's just, at the same time, I don't think Juve need to um, pour a lot of money into uh, another injury-prone player. And I know that can, contradicts my entire feelings on Zaniolo, uh, but he just got injured right now. Zaniolo is at least healthy right healthy right now. Um, Jorginho, obviously, you know I'm high on Jorginho, Pogba, and Savage. Uh, I, I still think Malinkovic Savage is a dream. It, it is similar to the Mohamed Salah we talked about earlier in the video. I think... Um, I think, well, I would say Jorginho. I think Malinkovic Savage is a daydream for us as well. So I think it's really probably between Pogba and Jorginho. And then Savage is right there next as, like a, as a, if it could ever happen. And then we'll see about the other names. That, that's how I would do it, at least. Let me know uh, what, what your options would be of those that we talked about right there. Um, anyway, guys, that'll do it for today's episode of the Daily News here on the Beyond Canary Zone. Let me know your thoughts on all the stories we talked about today. What do you think about the fallout with the Dybala saga? I know a lot of you tuned in yesterday and talked about that, as well as Zaniolo to replace him, Raspadori, all these other names that are coming out here. Which ones do you think would you keep high on your list? Let me know in the comment section down below. Anyway, if you haven't already, please go ahead and like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell icon to stay notified for all of our latest videos. Make sure you follow Beyond Canary Zone at Beyond Canary Zone on Twitter and Instagram. Instagram and Facebook as well. And then if you feel so inclined, please follow me at Justin Sofro on Twitter too. I'll see you guys next time. Forza Juve, Forza Bianconeri.